Uh, Nick, it's really good just to have the opportunity to chat. Uh, you've been with us as our facilities manager uh, for a, quite a number of months now, and it'd be lovely just to get to know a little bit more about you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your family. Okay, so I'm married to the lovely Kate, uh, and we live in Hadlow. Um, I've got three kids. Jonah is 20, Ben is 18, and Lydia's 15, going on 21. I think <laughs> they seem to grow up faster and faster, they slow down a bit. But um, yeah, and um, we've been in Hadlow for about 15 years. 15 years, yeah. Now, tell us a little bit about how you started to follow the Lord Jesus yourself. Uh, my mum and dad, um, I think they wanted a lay-in, so they used to get me to go to Sunday school, and it's a local Church of England Sunday school. And actually, I learnt an awful lot. I mean, I, I can f safely say that because of that, I really did know the Lord. But um, I decided it wasn't for me. I got into trouble with the wrong sort of people, and I started uh, you know, getting in trouble with the police. I used to steal cars. I wasn't a very nice person, I have to say. But God had other plans for me, and I was invited to a church bizarrely invited to the church I went in and I met Jesus and he fully saved me fully forgave me and my life has not been the same since I was about 18 when that happened yeah so, well, that sounds a, a, a wonderful story yeah. I'm sure that folk would love to ask you a little bit more perhaps there'll be opportunities where you can share mm. more about that because one of the things is that you are our facilities manager but that's three days a week mm. uh, so Tell us a little bit about what you do in the other days uh, of the week, because I think you, you've got a particular <laughs> ministry, haven't you? Yeah. Now, let me just say, remember sometimes when you go outside and you see those young people on the streets and they're on the corners and you really don't want to talk to them? That was me. Um, and now it's completely the other way. Since I've met Jesus, I just love telling people about who he is and what he's done for my life. And I've got a great testimony, really, that, you know, I was somebody who used to steal cars and he's changed my life. Um, I was even in a gang and um, one of my gang members said to me, of all the people, Nick, you're the last person. And so uh, two and a half days a week, I'm in this amazing position to go out in the streets, um, depending on where I feel the Holy Spirit is leading me to, and just talking to people about Jesus. Now, I know some people say that's not easy, and to be fair, I, I understand that, but I, I do have a natural ability just to get into conversation and somehow turn it around just so I can give them my testimony and talk to them. Um, we've recently, I've been uh, actually going with a friend of mine who's actually got a cross, you know, like a, a proper wooden cross. It's about well, how, how big? It, literally two and a half metres long and about one and a half metres high. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, wide. Um, and we literally take it out on our shoulders. It's not a penance, you know, I'm not doing it <laughs> because I've done anything wrong. But it's just been such a great illustration and people come to us and want to talk to us. It's yeah. just a, a natural draw. So tell us, what, what, where have you been? Where, where do you go with this cross? And uh, I, I mean, because you, you live in Tunbridge, don't you? Yeah. Do, you so there? Um, well, I, have, I do do Tunbridge and I go on a Friday night and I do talk about, the, about Jesus. I've never taken a cross there, but what we've done with, with a friend of mine called Richard, we really felt to go to the Medway towns. Mm. So we've gone to places like Maidstone, Rochester, Gravesend on Thursday, and we just just asked the Lord, where does he want me to go? And we just walked where we feel God wants us to walk to. We don't talk to everyone, we just see people come and talk to us, but there's some people that we really feel God wants us to talk to. So we just go up to them, we just say, you know, we're here, we've got the cross. What does the cross think? What do you think of the cross when you see it? And yeah. it starts a conversation off, uh, and then we're, we're there, you know, and, it, and it's absolutely amazing, the reactions that we've got. It's a real privilege. T tell us just one or two of the stories of the people who you've, you've encountered in this well, way. Well, um, I've got loads of really good <laughs> testimonies, as you can imagine, uh, all different shapes and sizes as well. But I was out on Saturday, uh, and we were trying to, uh, encourage people. We had an a evangelistic event and um, we met a, a woman and she was off, just off to the gym and we just started talking to her and just, you know, you just want to get to know them, don't you, before we actually sort of, they, I mean, obviously they knew we were Christians because we had this massive cross with us, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, evidently she was just about to go in the next about three or four weeks, uh, she was going to go to Abitha and she was going to start up a, a cannabis uh, cafe. 
which is okay that's different you know and we just started talking to her about that and just um explaining that actually we can do all these things we can we can try and find help in other areas but at the end of the day the only person who's really going to help us is jesus and i know that she would she liked you know keeping herself fit but you know we've got to think about the spiritual side of us as well yeah. and had she thought about the spiritual side and um, what does that look like and sometimes we use different substances and different things to try and cover other issues yeah but we found that Jesus is the one that heals us on the outside and on the in and she was really with it you know she thought that was absolutely great and she allowed us to pray for her uh, and then we just you know talked to her a little bit about the Bible and gave us some literature uh, and that was just on Saturday which I just thought was amazing yeah and you, you uh, when we were chatting before you talked about somebody who who saw the cross and they came directly over you hadn't spoken to them you, they came over to you because I think were they involved in the occult and they were trying to get out of it or no we've had two occasions where um, people have been involved in the occult or been involved in witchcraft and they literally come to us because they see the cross and they actually know the only way to get out of some of the things that they've been involved in is with the cross and we've prayed for them and where we can we've helped them to find uh, other agencies that will help them on, yeah. on their way and stuff like that which is just amazing uh, can i tell you just one other quick yeah, yeah. testimony um we also train people so we say to them why don't you come out with us and go and talk to people about jesus and some people just think that's great they just need a little bit of encouragement just need that loving kindness you know to say this is okay you, you can do this um and one of them came out with us and her first time and she saw a woman looking at the cross quite distinctly um, so she went over to her and she just started talking to her and evidently that day she'd said to God you know I'm really lonely I don't feel loved I don't feel that you're there and the, she came over and she said well God's told me to come over to you and to tell you that he loves you that you're th he thinks you're amazing and then they just said do you mind if I pray with you and they did and then they just hugged and in the street they were just crying both crying for each other because you know because of the love of Jesus and that's just I just think it's amazing and we see this more and more when people I've, I've just had a word and I just said look you've been talking to Jesus today and they go yeah how do you know that and God's got a word for you he, he thinks you're amazing yeah. and he's got a future for you he's got a life for you and it's just what people need just just at the right time yeah I, I see you've got a, a John's gospel yes. with you I, 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 at the end of a conversation w would you often give a, a gospel I mean how, how do you sort of take Some, things further sometimes people actually want to give their lives to the Lord and it yeah. comes it's quite natural but I always want to leave them with something yeah. um, and uh, we have these pocket, the, we have these Bibles from the Pocket Testament League, and these are great. They're just the Book of John, hmm. um, but it has in the in the start of it, it does tell them about how to become a Christian and what that yeah. means. But we've been encouraging people just to, um, it's got 21 chapters, just to read one chapter every day for three weeks and yeah. just ask God to show them what that means. Yeah. And people have taken up the challenge and said, I will. And then I just believe God's going to do something amazing because the Word of God is ju it's just changed my yeah. life, as you can imagine. Um, and we give them something and something to do, to put their faith of what, of what we've said to them into action. Yeah. And that, you know, uh, increases their faith and hopefully yeah. that, that there's a prayer of how to become a Christian in there. So it's all there. So we hope that they will take that and yeah. actually put into action. Wonderful. Now, now Nick, um, it, it's been great hearing these stories and everything. If there were just a, a couple of things that you would love us to be praying for you about, w what would they be? Obviously, you know, I go out every week and if somebody just knew that we, when I go out that they would be praying, that would be just amazing. But when I've had the, 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 uh, the Gospel of John, it would be great if people could get in contact with me so that I could tell them a name of the person that I've given it to because I'd like to say to the people that I meet on the street, there's somebody praying for you hmm. and they're going to be reading through John at the same time as you and they're going to be praying for you. I think would be a really good step forward. I said it to this woman on Saturday and she was really blessed that somebody would be, would be would like to think about her and pray for her even though they've never met her. Yeah. Oh, Nick, uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, it's been great having you serving on the team as facilities manager. But 
just wonderful to hear about this other ministry that you're involved with. So thank you so much just for speaking with me <laughs> thank this you for the morning. Time. I think it's great. Thank you so much. Thank you.